Listen to the Vibes. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Listen to the Vibes. And I'm pleased to have Miss Roxy Astor here with me. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, where do we start? I think everybody's heard probably the same story. So let me see if I can come up with something different for you. It was a long time ago. And keep in mind, this is like 37 years ago. Uh, and I have a big birthday coming up. But I'm going to say it on air for the first time so I can get used to it. I'm going to be turning 60 years old, young. Yeah. And I'll, you believe it's 60. Uh, okay, I said it on the air. It's over. I feel better. <laughs> um, so I look back and, and you know, and we talk about GLOW and I always say the fact that we're still talking about GLOW is amazing. We're still talking about it. Mm. And um, But I was a, I know you and I had talked about wrestling and I wasn't a wrestling fan. You know, I grew up in a small town, didn't even really know what wrestling was. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, I was a hairdresser and uh, put myself through hairdressing school and then got a little bored with that, even though I still do it to, to this day. Um, then put myself through the Seattle Art Institute. And so I wanted to be a hairdresser slash clothing designer slash slash wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, I'm kind of still trying to find my way i'm young and you know okay i don't want to do that at this moment so i moved to la and i tell people this all the time because and it's a true story and whether it makes sense or not it makes sense to me is the reason why i moved from from auburn washington is i saw flash dance and i thought wow jennifer bill's like this independent tough woman i want to go move to la and live in uh, a loft and I want to weld. And I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what has that got to do with anything wrestling? I don't know. Um, but uh, so a, a couple stories that I'll tell you is when I first got to LA, I just thought you could walk into any studio and go, here I am. <laughs> and I was never afraid of doing anything. And I've always been like that. Uh, so I remember I walked into this leather store and, uh, and this is a story I don't think I told anybody, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> and I thought I, I walked in, I thought I need a job and it was on sunset and I think they have pink dot. It's a store there now. And that's when leather was really popular back then. And I walked in and I sold a jacket to the guy from the werewolf in London. The, one of the main guys. Oh, really? I jacket, and I didn't work there. So guess who got the job? Me. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> well, that's a story I've never shared with anybody, um, which I think is kind of a unique story of how I led into just, you know, going, OK, I saw the phone number on TV because there are things that lead you to doing things. And me, there's no fear of, of doing stuff like that. So uh, another thing uh, I walked into was a studio. And I said, I, you know, I went to the Seattle Art Institute and I want to be on set. I want to do this. Do you have a resume? No, this is all I have. (laughs) And they go, well, we got this little show called Killer Clowns. And I'm like, oh, okay." And then come to find out I didn't get the job and it ended up being a cult classic. Mm -hmm. So I was very close to being uh, like everybody's very close to being in LA <laughs> to something, you know, but I felt like I was really close. And um, that was my first, uh, okay, I think you got to kind of know people to get into the business. So that's what I've learned later on. So I stayed on my sister's couch and I would watch uh, Glow every Saturday. And I, I would watch it for the hair and for the outfits and not so much for the wrestling or the acting, but I thought it was just very comical and very unique. And then that's when they had the audition. And then honestly, I went back to Sunset where I did the tryout. And then I was driving over to Las Vegas and got hired on after, I think it was, I think there was about 300 girls or, you know, all trying out. And then a lot of them didn't quite like it or it wasn't what they thought or it wasn't the money. And I just went just knowing, okay, I finally got hired, you know, doing something different. So that was my, my story to glow, but I kind of gave you a pre story to glow, which is something that nobody's really heard before. So 
Well, you went from not being so much of a wrestling fan to being a wrestler, and now you you like you've taken it beyond that. You've got a musical and all kinds of other stuff that you do uh, with Glow. Uh, mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that. There was a documentary, the Glow documentary. I don't know if you mm -hmm. saw that, and um, and they brought Mount Fiji in, and that won awards, and that was really that's kind of when Glow came back um because i went off to go be a mom and i raised three kids oh mm -hmm. but in that time i was a fashion designer and i sold to 700 stores of a mm -hmm. brand called tickles and giggles and it was in beverly hills so anyways that kind of led me on to okay there's something else out there i'm i'm missing something so after a divorce um and then deciding uh okay what can i do so the documentary came up and then I kind of thought, you know what, I'm looking at the fans and I was at the screening for the glow documentary and I saw everybody just like loving the glow girls. Like you can see us on YouTube and uh, we're on stage and it was all quiet. And I just started doing my rap <laughs> and then all the other girls started doing their rap and I just felt like there was something there. So that's when I did a Kickstarter for the first afterglow fan party and I raised five thousand dollars. I got, uh, I think it was ten glow girls on stage, gave them each a hundred bucks, and that's where I got Matilda to come out there and sit next to me. And uh, I was very afraid of her. I was a big fan of hers, and she ended up becoming one of my best friends. So mm -hmm. that was the start of the afterglow. Uh, that was two thousand fourteen. Now I've had a lot of people say, "Give it up, give it up, it's done, it's that," and then you have the glow Netflix. You know that pops up. But I've done a lot of podcasts, uh, a lot of the glow girls. Uh, Sunny, the California girl, she does a lot of radio, and she's out there. Uh, Royal Hawaiian, she's carrying on the glow name. So all of us, we're still doing that. But my thing is, I do Afterglow because I don't own the the trademark to Glow. And this is what we're doing after glow. So, you know, this is who we are. We're not, you know, like 21 years old and I'm not going to be running around my wrestling outfit. <laughs> <laughs> so, nope, I'm not. And so I like to kind of produce and create. So I think the hair and doing the costumes helped when we did the play, because when it came down to it, I did help with the costumes and I did the hair <laughs> and I did some of the hair for glow back in the day. So I was able to tease the hair and turn a shorter Matilda into a bigger Matilda just by teasing her hair. <laughs> so uh, it, we did the play and it was on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And we did and it was kind of like a dress rehearsal play. It mm -hmm. wasn't really like the big grand uh, play. Then all of a sudden we got nominated and Chris Carver was our director who did over 40 uh, plays and he did Psycho the Musical. And um, then all of a sudden we're nominated. I'm nominated for Best Actress. So was uh, Matilda and Mary Kennedy from Shameless. She would pay, uh, play Jackie Stallone and Sheena Metal. And so I went to go visit Matilda and her and I were cracking up about being nominated for Best Actress. We're like, this is a, <laughs> what? <laughs> because she was going off script and I'm keeping her in line, but I guess that made it more real. You know, so we got through the play. Um, obviously, I didn't win for Best Actress. There was about 300 other, you know, people that were in plays. And um, then we got nominated for Best Ensemble of the Decade. Now, to me, that was really important because that is an award for everybody in the play. So you have five original Glow Girls. You got Dallas. You got Matilda. You got MTV. You got Sunny. And you got me. And we're on stage. And there are younger versions of us on the stage. And we have a small little wrestling ring. And we had somebody playing like the David McClain, Johnny C type. And so we kind of told the story of what happen when we were told that glow was over because that was a question that everybody would ask what happened to glow what happened so we kind of told the story uh before during and of course after glow and that's how it happened so we won best ensemble of the decade um beating out hamilton wow. i have to say and that's only with a ten thousand dollar budget so not too bad um and beating out mama mia beating out hundreds of plays so to me um the play was very fan driven 
and the way people voted. Uh, also, Christopher Carver won for Best Director of the Decade. And then we end up winning Most Anticipated Play Coming Back to Vegas because that's where we're going to end up. Wow. And you quote me on that. That's where we're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go back to Vegas and finish it up there. But everything you put your hands on becomes a success in one way or another. It's pretty impressive. Uh, 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 obsession. You know, my, my son, who's 33, was asking me, Mom, what exactly do you want to do? And I, I just kind of sat back and go, oh, wait. Wait, I don't know. I think I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is what I'm doing. Now, have I made tons of money from it? No. Will I? I could. But it's uh, it's just one of those things that just I, I live for it. It's 24-7. You know, I'm friends with Sunny. We talk, you know, on the phone. I still talk to April. We do events and and Dallas and, and we're still friends, you know, some of the glow girls. So and that's kind of a, a unique group. You don't have that, you know. I, I was, in fact, I was watching A League of Their Own, the remake, and I always called us, the Glow Girls, A League of Their Own, because we are the girls that come back and kind of, but we're, we never went away. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing about us, we don't go away, we're still here. You could see me out there, and it's Roxy Astor, but there was something that we did called More Than a Wrestler that I wrote, and it was uh, in a women's empowerment uh, book, and it came out from Pen Can, and that's kind of my story is that I'm more than a wrestler and it's, I have so much more to me because they'll just go Roxy Astor. That's the wrestler. No, no, there's more to me. And that's to me with every wrestler too. Um, and you know, and to say, you know, I've been homeless. I've been there. I think people can relate to you. I mean, I've had, you know, the dollar store, I've had 20 bucks and I've had to get through it to feed my kids for the week, but I did it. And, you know, you get through it and then you look back and uh, and that's why I'm going strong, because you know what? It's just like that's all I've got. I got to just keep looking forward because I'm not going to look back. I will never be in that position again. And I've learned a lot and I taught my kids a lot on how not to be in that position. So well, women and men hear it from me. You, you, uh, you do fashion design. You did stuff for kids, right? Yeah, I had a, um, a clothing line called Designs by Tracy. And first I started off with motorcycle jackets and I called it Lil Leathers. And they were like little Harley Davidson jackets for like three to six months old to I think going up to two years. But I figured it was too expensive to get it made here. So I went to, and did Designs by Tracy. And then I wanted to stay home and raise my kids. So I stayed at home and did a line called Tickles and Giggles. And so I had that for about 16 years and that's the one I sold and Chris Jenner, very sweet lady, by the way, and sold to a lot of famous people. It was on friends. It was one of the outfits was on Oprah Winfrey and but I'm like, okay, but you know what? I think my favorite stories are when people would take uh, pictures of their kids in their clothes and, you know, at their parties to me, I like that. In fact, I bought two outfits on eBay and this is 18 years ago, and I have them in my drawer now that was part of Tickles and Giggles. Now, the funny story about Tickles and Giggles, I didn't keep the name. It is now, um, what do you call that? What do you call those pop places? <laughs> what do they call those places? Oh, uh, like the head shops? Yeah, there's a Tickles and Giggles in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's yeah, it's, it's not, it's not baby clothes. It's not me. So, um, no, but, and, and somebody even offered to, Hey, you want to get back into it? And I'm like, no way. No, it was, I had my run. I had my run with it. So it, it's out of my system, but I still do hair. I love doing hair except for when the hands hurt. Right. Yeah, I know. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. it is what it is. Well, fashion design, hairdressing, wrestling, producing, you just, you just do it all. Uh, if I don't, um, I could easily crawl back under the covers and go <laughs> <laughs> no. and, and, and rewatch Tiger King again. <laughs> Did you watch uh, the glow documentary? Uh, is it on Amazon? 
No, watch it on Tubi, Tubi.com. It's free. Okay. And you can watch that. And and that that will show you, you know, about us, what we went through. Um, I'm in there for a quick moment. Um, very quick. But it, it tells a story of GLOW. And with Mondo Guerrero from the Guerreros from WWE. Um, but everybody says that was a really good good documentary when it comes to wrestling. And thank you. I want to thank everyone out there. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by, but please subscribe and I hope you'll come back. For those of you who are regular to the channel, your support means everything to me. It's because of you. I get to do this. I get to talk to wonderful people like Roxy and uh, until the next one, everyone, please take care. Be kind to one another. God bless and peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network 